screen. All right. All right, thank you everyone for staying with us. Um, we are back with the forum for the Barrington Town Council Democratic primary candidates. We have three candidates with us. Um, for anyone who's just joining us, I'm Scott Pickering, the moderator for tonight. Uh, we have with us Braxton Medlin, Kathleen Berard, and Anthony Arico. Uh, we've determined the order for their opening statements. Um, one note to the audience, um, sorry, this is our first time doing this um, this technology in this way. And I'll just explain to anyone. We're in a room at the Barrington Library, the candidates, myself, and volunteers from the League of Women Voters. Uh, so there's no live audience in front of us. We have a piece of technology in the center of the room, which is picking up our sound and our, um, our, our videos and, and broadcasting it. But uh, so as the candidate speaking, they're kind of facing basically a speaker in the middle of, of the table. Uh, we're broadcasting on Zoom. I think we needed to change something in the setup. So if you're seeing everyone who's in the Zoom room, it'd be very good to switch in the upper right corner to switch to speaker view. So you're going to focus on us the whole time and we'll fill the screen and you can see your potential town council candidates more clearly. So, um, so if you haven't done so already, switch to speaker view. Um, and we're going to get started. Opening statements, Braxton Medlin, you can begin. Thank you so much, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for having all three of us here. My name is Braxton Howard Medlin. I moved to Barrington two years ago with my fiance and our twin boys. Uh, I've enjoyed living in town, and I'm really looking forward to uh, representing you as your next town council member. Uh, because I am currently the chair of the DEI committee, and I'm really looking forward to increasing representation in the town, as well as helping to improve walkability. Uh, my fiance and I are runners, and we love running on Soams, and we'd love to see a little bit more safety regarding the bridges and the sidewalks on Soams, as well as we're concerned about our future residents. So we would love to make sure that our town is utilizing all of our resources as far as resiliency and making sure that our boys and the people who are being educated in the amazing Barrington school systems can continue to live here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kathleen Burrard. Hi, I am Kate Burrard. I'm excited to be here and grateful as well, um, especially to be sitting next to Braxton, who I think is an awesome running mate. And Tony as well, I know has a long um, tenure in the town uh, and giving back. I really enjoy living here with my family. I have two children that attend home school. I currently practice real estate law uh, right in Seekonk. Um, and I am excited to sort of use my experience as a real estate attorney and civil litigator, um, as well as my time on the town's planning board to bridge the gap between a lot of our town's initiatives. I find that we spend a lot of time um, with really good ideas and they don't sort of meld together. So I think my personality lends well to consensus building um, and finding those ties across those different um, efforts. So thank you for your time and I'm glad you're here with us. Thank you. Mr. Rico, Anthony Rico. Thank you, Scott. I wanna take the lead and Scott and these three newspapers for having this forum. So many people are gratified. Thank you, thank you guys for having this wonderful forum. Good evening, to those who don't know me, my name is Anthony Rico. I've been a lifelong resident of the town for 57 years. I went to Barrington High School, graduated, and all the elementary schools. I did, except for two, Hampton Meadows and Soames, because I used to live in the shopping center, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, then we moved to Lincoln Avenue, where I live now. But being brought up here, I've been here all my life. My two sisters went to Barrington schools and graduated from Barrington High School. One of my sisters graduated from Barrington College, which is a Zion property. So, and my dad is a Vietnam, um, a veteran uh, from Korean War, and my parents are still in town. He's a Korean War vet. I'm an aide currently in the state of Rhode Island. I've been elected to the House District Committee and the Senate District Committee, and I serve on the Park and Rex Commission. I'm a member of the Barrington Town Committee, and this is a dedicated volunteer like Kate mentioned. I'm a volunteer. I helped out with the after prom. I helped out on the Boosters Club and announcing sports games. Many people know me from sports fields, from the soccer or football. I enjoy helping out when I can doing soccer and sports. And I'm running for town council because I love this town, a lifelong resident who wants to serve the people of Barrington. And I love this town. I just want to serve it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, we're going to move to question and answer format. Uh, each candidate will be asked, um, all the candidates will be asked the same question. They all have a minute to respond and then any additional time if they choose. 
Uh, first question, Mr. Medlin. Do you have any critiques of the current town council, its priorities, its conducts, its decisions, or its public interactions? That's a great question. Um, I do not have any critiques of the current town council. Um, I think that the, the five members who are currently serving are great. They have done great in their leadership capacity. I think uh, what really spoke to me just as far as getting involved with the DEI committee was the fact that there were five people who are all different people, have different ideologies, come from different backgrounds, but have all come together to move the town of Barrington forward. And when I was deciding whether or not I should sit on the DEI committee, I considered what kind of town I would be looking to serve. And the leadership that we have now is excellent and they have done a really good job. And I'm really looking forward to uh, sitting on the council with my colleagues here um, and uh, stepping forward in the, the legacy they left behind. Ms. Broad, same question. Um, I do, my only critique is related to uh, sort of um, personalizing the topics. I think oftentimes we can get wrapped up in the emotionality of some of these um, issues that have come in front of the board instead of staying focused on, on what the task is. And that's what I hope um, my particular skill set will help with. I'm a good sort of task wrangler um, and sort of uh, builder to a, uh, the same common goal. Because I think everyone certainly as Brex instead serves um, with this feeling of wanting to give back. That's the entire reason they're there. They dedicate many hours um, to making sure that the town moves forward in a progressive, thoughtful way. Um, so, but my one critique would be to sort of keep the focus on the task and away from the, the personality. Thank you, Mr. Rico. I agree overall. The council is fine, just like Kate said. The thing is, somebody's does get into the person, and I think more input would be good. Having meetings on streaming, live streaming, I've been an advocate of that. To me, that's very important. Having it live on cable TV or in live streaming. I know Bristol has it on live meetings, and I think Ben would do the same. And I heard they're doing some work now in the council chambers. That would be great. And having more people show up. Um, and meetings would be good, and uh, whatever it takes, because as you know, I work in the state house, and I'm going to say, Barony residents come out in droves at the state house. I would love to see more act, active people come into our meetings in the council because a lot of serious decisions, ladies and gentlemen, are made at the council level, and we need to have people move. Ms. Berard, I just, yeah, I just have one more comment, and it, it's more positive, and I hope to build on it. I find um, by serving on the monastery committee and being a part of sort of the planning board's sort of offshoots. Um, I've been more involved in meetings that I think deserve more public input. Uh, and I think we're taking steps forward to do that. I think the town council has, has put a few different uh, programs together that include neighborhood stakeholders, um, neighboring towns, neighboring um, committees in order to have a broader sort of diverse conversation. And I'd really like to see that continue to expand also on a positive note, but maybe a critique is up until recently, I didn't notice a very um, easy way for the town to get updates um, for a, a, a resident like myself to receive an update. Uh, now the new website affords that. Thank you. All right, new question. Uh, Ms. Berard, we're gonna start with you. Can you identify two pri priorities you would like to accomplish in a four year term on the town council? Be as specific as you can. Sure. Um, number one would be to push forward the complete streets that's in its final draft um, and really can set the town up to, to get some additional funding from um, grant sources. I think it works really well um, to interplay with state um, and DPW. I, I talk a lot about combining sort of um, what DPW does, what we do for climate mitigation, what we do for walkability uh, together. Um, so I really hope to connect that communication so that when we're pulling up a street, we're putting in a sidewalk, um, albeit a short stretch. That would be number one. Um, number two, uh, it's just, I think, to have a nicer community conversation over a lot of these topics. Um, I would like to see that be an actionable goal. Thank you. Mr. Rico. Just more input from the public. I think that's very important. And obviously, our recreational fields being on parking wrecks, uh, currently in the some issues, looking at Haynes Park, I know some residents have concerns, but we need some fields and it's in the comp plan. So I think we should have adequate fields for our youth needs. That's really important in town. I keep hearing that over and over again. So obviously 
the council can play a big role in that going forward besides the popping up Chair Medlin, same question, which I can repeat if you need it. Repeat yes, it. please. Sure. Uh, can you identify two priorities you'd like to accomplish in a four year term on the council? Try to be as specific as you can. So in a four year term on the council, uh, my colleague Kate uh, spoke about the Complete Streets Initiative. Um, like I said previously, I enjoy running. I would love to see um, our streets more walkable, uh, the completion of some of the sidewalks, as well as the completion of the bridges that we have that would uh, help with um, the bike path that runs through our town. Um, additionally, I'd like to see um, some finalization to our resiliency plans um, in discussions of climate change and how things are changing. And I'm talking about, you know, the future of our town and our town could be underwater unless we do things to change that now. And so during my four year term, I would love to have a completed resiliency plan as well as increased walkability of our streets so that all of us can enjoy exercise and you know, walking around town. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Mr. Rico, we start with you. Can you describe the relationship between the town council and the town manager? How would you assess the way it's worked in the past? How would you like to see it work in the future? In the past, I think um, it worked fine and currently, but there were some issues in the past, I should say. In the past, it seemed like there were some issues, obviously. And um, now it seems that with Phil coming from planning is a big plus. So I think with Phil there now is more stable, but I believe there were some conflicts in the past. And now with the new manager, I know a lot of people were excited have the change. And so when they feel coming from as a experience as a planner has only helped, I think. Medlin. Thank you. Um, I think that the current relationship between the town manager and the town council is a good one. Um, I know that our current town manager was our town planner, so he knows Barrington very, very well. Um, and I know that the town council, as I stated before, are five uh, great people and they chose um, between a bunch of different applicants, they chose the current uh, town manager. And I think they did a great job and they work well together. I've attended many meetings um, and I know that they are not only being transparent about what's going on with town, but they are always seeking input from us. Uh, they're basically their stakeholders because we are the neighbors, we live here. Um, but I think they made a great choice and I think they do have a good relationship, a good working relationship. Ms. Burrard. Um, yes, I tend to agree. Uh, serving with Phil on the planning board, um, I think the town is really lucky. Uh, he has insight into grant writing, into um, sort of a workability of the town, being, you know, having served our community for so long, plus understanding the infrastructure needs. Um, hiring Teresa Green as the new um, town planner was also a super positive. I know that's a little bit outside of your um, question, but I think in working all together, we sort of have covered the infrastructure purpose, the working together with a manager um, and the town council more is, uh, can play more of a policy role and less of sort of understanding uh, the back costs that Phil would know better. As far as any previous relationships, I, I'm not super privy to those except for what was shared by the, the paper otherwise, um, but I'm excited to move forward in its capacity currently. Good question, Mr. Medlin. Uh, what what could the town of Barrington do to support support and encourage business growth in town? To support and encourage business growth uh, in the town, um, the town of Barrington could make sure that they are being uh, progressive in their uh, different business ventures, um, being progressive as far as taxes are concerned. Um, I know that uh, my colleague Kate is involved with the planning board. Um, so I know that zoning is, is, a, is a big interest um, here in the town. Um, there are different kinds of businesses who might want to be in a certain space, but it's not zoned that way. Um, I do not practice real estate, so that's not my area, but I think that that would be very important um, as far as supporting businesses. I know that there are other things that will be um, on the ballot as far as uh, businesses are concerned and making sure that our town is um, open to different kinds of residents, different kinds of initiatives, I think will help uh, bring business and keep businesses here in Barrington. Ms. Burrard. Um, yes, a, a lot of what uh, Braxton has said, I, I think you know we're at a lack of land here. If you look at our complete streets, if you look around town, we don't have a lot of open space to build new. Um, I think we need to start to think about expanding upwards on some of our um, areas that are zoned appropriately, neighborhood business or business in general. 
Um, a lot of towns that I've lived in the past have, you know, if you think about the Shaw's shopping center, the ability to put apartments up there or different businesses. Um, so I think we have some room to expand. I think we need to be flexible with our zoning. Um, and I, I think that's a case by case basis in general um, for zoning. I, I think we see a lot of changes geared toward affordable housing and um, you know accessory units, and hopefully we can sort of mirror that in the business scape. Um, I'm excited for new and differing businesses to come to town, and I hope that you know uh, we have a thoughtful conversation about those as they come forward. So Rico, I think it's very important to have a good relationship with our business, especially our small, because I've heard campaigning that it would be a nice idea. Um, to have more communication with the council and the powers to be. And I would try to have a summit or a workshop so we can bring them in and hear them from them directly. I think too long to take advantage of them to be here. And to me, small business is very important. So having an open dialogue can help get you know, input from the small business people who are here and help them out any way we can. And I think that the street fair was a great idea to do that again. It's for community and having them together, and that was a good idea. So more pro-business approach from the council would be great. And I would like to do that as yeah. council. Ms. Roy, Sorry. Um, just one more comment. I have been to the Economic Development Commission meetings before, and oftentimes things will come up that would be very beneficial to business, such as opening Wood Street so that more um, people walk past those businesses on Wood Street. So I'm, I'm hoping to connect that conversation more so between our businesses in town um, and some other efforts that we have happening, complete streets and otherwise. Okay, thank, thank you. you. New question, uh, Ms. Berard, we begin with you. What are your views of affordable housing in Barrington? Has the town done enough? If not, what do you believe could be done moving forward? Thank you for that question. Affordable housing is really important to me uh, being in real estate. Also, just as a member of this community, I know how expensive it is to live here in general. Um, and I come from a family where I'm a working professional and so is my husband. So I can imagine the disparities. Um, and I, you know, I moved here for the school and I think a, a lot of people do the same. So I think we can certainly do better. Um, I find that we're missing a middle uh, housing market in town in general. Um, I'm not necessarily sure what the answer is to that. I do believe the state is trying to be more creative um, and our town more flexible with those options. Currently, we have two large properties that could help to alleviate some of that um, need. But yes, I would love to push forward any effort that uh, helps to find more affordability for our town and uses the resources appropriately. Currently, we have quite a bit of money um, for down payment assistance that just doesn't practically get used. Um, so sort of understanding the interplays between what's actually happening, what's actually affordable, and how we can best benefit those folks. Mr. Rico. No, I agree. I mean, there's two positives of land are very important uh, for affordable housing. And at the State House, obviously, we passed a big bill this year for housing, and we have a new czar, I believe, and that's going to help out. And I think the council should work with our general assembly members to any way we can get funds and assistance from the state and the federal government, but yes, it's very important. We got to have affordable housing. And to me, the leadership of the state house made it a priority, and our rep made it a priority. Because I, I think that's very important. So I think we're working with the council, working with the state, and having that expertise, frankly, you know, help out by being in the state house. I think I can obviously push that issue. And we will advocate hard for Barrington to have affordable housing. Mr. Medlin. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I agree with my colleague Kate uh, about affordable housing. Um, I live off of Soans, uh, just two streets down from uh, one of the places where we do have affordable housing in Barrington. It's a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. I love it. I think it increases opportunities for people to live in Barrington to take advantage of the great school system that we have here. Um, I, you know, picked my house in Barrington because it was this beautiful piece of property um, and Come to find out, I live around some of the most incredible humans um, in probably the state of Rhode Island. My neighbors are fantastic. Um, the people that I've come across with the DEI committee are fantastic. And I would love more people to have that kind of opportunity. Not everybody has the kind of capital or wealth to be able to afford some of the homes that are here. But with affordable housing, that would bring uh, those kinds of people here, those kinds of opportunities, and would only increase um, they would only increase the, the value of uh, the town because of the people that we, we'd have uh, coming in to, to live here. Thank you. 
New question, Mr. Rico. Is the town doing enough to provide quality recreational facilities to residents? Do you, do you have your own ideas about what should be done? Well, as you know, I'm a member of the Park and Rex Commission, and I just said earlier, Kings Park is a good location. I was on the IHAP committee, which studied a lot. And the bottom line is we think that's probably the best location because Canese, there's not much there left and Pickleball is losing it. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, that was a dump. And the DM only gives us so much to do. So that there's some health issues and safety reasons why we can't go too far that developing over there. So we, we as, as a commission came up with the ad hoc committee, we came up with some solutions and Haynes Park kept coming up over and over. Yes, there's residents, Concerns. And I, I was at that meeting when they were heard, and I kept saying, I agree with you, ladies and gentlemen, especially on the environmental study that needs to be done. Yeah. So that way we know what we can do. It's a mild proposal. There's two, but the first one, phase one, is very mild. That's one way to look at it. I know some people want to turf in town, but there are some questions about the high school and flooding. That would be a big issue if the high school didn't feel. So I mean, that's another issue. But yes. For folks' recreation, I'm for it. It's just a matter of where, but our students and our youth need good, safe fields. So we have to do something, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Medlin. So uh, the question I believe is, is the town doing enough? Um, I do believe that the town is doing enough, but I also, at the same time, believe that the town could do more. Um, I know that there are funds available. I know that uh, some of the questions that have come up regarding bathrooms, um, as far as just more open space uh, for, you know, not only just kids and teens to play, but also adults who might be interested in recreational space. Um, recreation is incredibly important. Um, and, you know, that's, I think it makes a difference. People have outdoor space, especially having had to be indoors for the past two years because we're, you know, still dealing with the pandemic. Um, I think outdoor space is very important, so I think there's always more that can be done uh, to develop our, our outdoor space and make sure that it's safe um, and um, available. Ms. Brewer. Uh, I'm split a little bit um, in this question. Uh, one, because I have a child who will be on the soccer field or baseball field um, till the end of time. Uh, we've already entered that stage. Um, I, I definitely think that we need facilities for the restroom. I've been that mom that has carried my daughter into the woods and held her so that she could use the restroom, which I think is unacceptable. Um, I do think we can have a trash in trash out policy that allows for paper bags. They do it at state parks all over New Jersey. Um, but then at the other end, I feel like we're making a great effort at Walker Farm. I mean, we're using the resources that we have to better our resources, right? That's that's the ultimate goal. Use what you have to um, increase that usability and desirability. I think the field question is challenging. I mean, Mr. Pickering, you laid, laid out what you believe would be the best, um, I, I think. And sure, that sounds great. I, I'm open to conversations with um, St. Andrews, uh, open to addressing more pedestrian issues with Haynes Park as, a, as opposed to a baseball field. But I think we have ad hoc committees that serve this purpose. Thank you. Thank you. New question begins with Mr. Medlin. Uh, what would you like to see the town do with the Carmelite Monastery property? So that has been a very hot topic um, for the past, for the time that I've been here um, in town. And I would like the town to utilize the property um, to, to, further the town's, to further the town's goals. Um, and I know that there, there has been a little bit of input from the public, but I know that there are a lot of Lama people who would like to come out and like to be heard. And so I would really like us to sit down and have a discussion, um, you know, whether that be at a town council meeting, whether that's at a series of different meetings to have here or in other places, um, to really come together and find out what would be best for the town. Um, I think that it should be used for either housing or businesses, but as it stands now, um, it's not getting utilized. So I think it should be used. I think it could be used for housing. I think it could be used to, to further business here, but it should be used. And also the public should have a say in what happens to the monastery. Ms. Berard. Yes, thank you for this question. Um, I served on the monastery uh, board, which is continuing to move forward. I think we should have a meeting um, soon. 
I personally saw it different um, in the beginning. I saw little little cottages, uh, affordable housing cottages for seniors. Um, and I think the part of good democratic process is that we have all these meetings together uh, with input, whether online or, or in person, that sort of morph that decision. Um, I think, unfortunately, instead of focusing on where we have found consensus, which is preserving some of the green space and allowing it to be a senior affordable um, section, we focused on preserving a building, um, I think, really for the mere reason of reducing capacity on the site, which is not necessarily the case. So instead of continuing to carry the cost of this building, I would like to see, um, you know, quick efforts made for any zoning or um, development wow. restrictions so that we can put that out and see what the market says. Mr. Rico, no, I, I obviously it's, it's a big issue. Uh, um, two years in a row, we came up with town meeting. The first year, one vote, and we had to vote again. Some people were surprised we had to vote again on it. But there are some concerns and issues from the residents in that neighborhood. So I agree with you. You know, the candidates here that we should have more input. I mean, that's very important. But yes, um, we have to do, do something there, affordable housing. But a lot of people were under the impression the first time they voted, it was going to be used for that. And it's just a matter of us fulfilling that promise. So having more hearings, more input from the residents, and getting any study done, because there were concerns when they brought some that area, just saying, making sure that it's environmentally safe, because it is an old we want to make sure. But overall, I'm for it, and just a matter of more input. Thank you. Uh, this is going to be our last question of the evening. And Mrs. Barad, we're going to start with you. Um, and this is not directly under the town council's purview, other than uh, the role you play, would play in um, financial management and, and impact on taxes. But um, as residents of the town, I'm curious your, your opinions on the school district's developing elementary school plans. Uh, do you have any, any any opinions on the direction it's going, whether it's the educational model, the use of the facilities, or the potential costs of the project? Thank you for this question. Um, I did a lot of studying on those um, meetings and those presentations. Unfortunately, I agree with some of the public comment that the timing of the meetings makes it a little challenging for a really adequate um, input. Uh, as a mom, I live two blocks from Soham School, so walking my son to school in the morning and picking him up are kind of the two moments that we have this sort of connection that uh, I would I would be sad to see go if that um, space was no longer used for um, for what it is now. However, I definitely have confidence in the group of professionals that have been put together to answer this question. I mean, I moved here for the schools, and if that means changing the buildings to make sure that my child gets the most up-to-date education, then I'm I'm for that. I I think that there's a lot of effort that has started this momentum. There's nothing that be used again. Um, this is the starting process and a requirement in order to get adequate state funding. Mr. Rico, no, um, some school, um, I was on that task force initially when they closed it initially. So this is the second time they closed that school. Well, way back in time, there was a committee and I was on that we, it was the some school we use tax force, and I was on that. But no, um, I agree with Ms. Barad. It needs to have you discussed more because it is a big move. And when you're closing a school, you want to make sure. And obviously, the question is what would be the use when you close it down? And there are some options we have. But again, public input is so important. I go by open meetings and open government. The more meetings you have, the more input. You can't go wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we recommend hopefully for more input and then support the decision. Just like we had to get a new middle school, I support that. Mr. Medlin. So um, unlike my colleague Kate, I do not have children who are in the schools, but I do live close to Soames. I live close to Hamden Meadows. Um, and I remember one time coming home from work. I came home around two o'clock and I'd never seen so many bicycles that weren't actually racing. It was school kids who were leaving school, going home to their you know, various places in the area. And I can't imagine those not seeing that. And also hearing Kate's antidote about being able to walk her child to school is something that speaks to my heart. I absolutely love that. So um, while it would be you know, hard to see that change, I understand that sometimes change is necessary for progress and for advancement and to keep our schools uh, sitting where they are, which is the best in the state. 
um, and some of the best in the country. Um, and I also trust the professionals who are in charge of uh, not only our school committee, but also taking care of the plans to advance our schools. So um, I would love to, to hear more. I look forward to having more conversations, um, but that's not my area of expertise, but I will keep listening. Ms. Moore, did you want to add something? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, I just think it's important to understand clarity of message, too. Um, I understand that the the from reading all these slides, which are consumable online to everyone, and I and I hope everyone does take a chance to look through them, um, it doesn't mean that films necessarily will be shuttered. Um, there could potentially be pre-K or kindergarten there as well. Um, I know it would still be nice to have a park or ball fields that are utilized by the town or the school system. So. I just challenge people to make sure that you consume all the information that is provided before you um, make a decision. So I know I'm doing the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, we're moving, uh, we're closing the question and answer period. We're moving to our closing statements. We're gonna go in the same order we started. Mr. Medlin, you're gonna go first. Um, you were very conservative with your use of wild cards. You have, up to four minutes for your closing remarks, if you would like. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I tend to be brief so that I don't say anything that I will have to take back. Mon, I hope you're watching. Um, <laughs> thank you so much uh, for this time. Um, I'm really, really excited to be here um, with my two colleagues here. Um, I've been a member of this town for two years, and I've been serving as the chair of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for the past year and it has been an incredible experience to see uh, some of the transformative things that have been going on. Um, and my heart for my community, my heart for service is really just expanded more. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing those same kinds of things with the town council. Um, I'd really like to increase representation. Um, one of my reasons for doing what I do is just so that somebody can look at me sitting at this table, sitting on the Zoom, sitting in the town council chamber, or maybe one day sitting in a courtroom saying, oh my gosh, look at Braxton, I can do that. Representation is so important. If you can't see it, you don't know that you can be it. Um, in addition, uh, my fiance and I loving, love walking the streets of Barrington. He's shown me uh, the place where he grew up. He grew up on Maple Ave, uh, right across the street from the Catholic church where he attended with his parents. And being able to walk to those places, being able to do that safely is something that's really, really important to us. And sometimes Soames can get a little dicey, but there are areas where there are sidewalks, and that's great. And I would love to see more sidewalks. I'd like to see the bridges finished so that we can continue to enjoy the bike path, with bridge, which bridges Barrington to Warren. Um, and finally, my concern is about the future. Uh, there are so many students in this school system who would probably like to return to Barrington. Um, in any town council meeting, if someone's giving a public comment, the first thing they say is, I've been in Barrington for 20 years. I've been in Barrington for 30 years. Um, the next 20 or 30 years are gonna be here before we know it. And we have to make sure that we're taking care of our town and taking care of the green space that we have and uh, watching the resiliency plans and making sure that we're paying attention to what's going on in the world so that we can have a future in Barrington. I would love to be part of that future in Barrington. I would love your vote for your next town council member. My name is Braxton Howard Medlin. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Ms. Barrard. It's hard to follow, Braxton. You, <laughs> you, uh, I'll give you a, a moment. Uh, you have up to two minutes. One minute. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can use one and everyone will thank you for it. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Braxton. Thank you, Tony, for being here, Scott, for putting this on, and um, the League of Women Voters. I appreciate being here and having the opportunity to share a little bit about um, where I stand. I certainly am available to answer any other further questions. Um, I really like the conversation. I, I think my biggest goal here is to utilize my skill to sort of link and collaborate what we have going on. I see a lot of um, really great efforts moving forward and some mismatch on that actionability. Um, I think we have really great resources in our town, both professionally and, um, you know, 20 miles of coastline. And I think that we need to work more, you know, more cohesively in seeing that um, uh, well cared for and move forward to the future. I like Braxton, want a future here in, in 20 years for my children, um, an affordable one, an accessible one. Um, I'm so grateful that he's running because I too agree that diverse perspectives and conversation move the ball much faster. Um, and much greater. 
I really, um, I really want to put a focus on less divisive action. Um, I think you can support veterans and also support a community that thoughtfully puts out symbols for um, other members. Uh, I just, I don't think we need to be so divisive. Um, I hope I can earn your vote in September and then again uh, in November. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Mr. Rico, you have up to three minutes. Okay, thank you. I want to thank the Denver League of Women and Women and Scott and these big newspapers. Very important to have the Barrington Times. Believe me, it's so important. I attend a lot, a lot of council meetings, a lot of meetings over the years, and I love going to meetings, researching information, learning what's going on in town. I know everyone can't do that because we all have jobs and lives, but I think it's important to find out what's going on and ask questions when necessary. And I think I can bring to the council the experience of going to the meetings and working in the state house, be an advocate for Barrington. I'm proud to live here. I live here all my life. My mom and dad are still here, and my sisters went to Barrington schools. I'm one of the Barrington Tonians who live here, and I love this town. I'm proud. I just want to serve. And I promise the people on the residents of Barrington, I will work very hard. I'll give it my all because people who know me know me as passion and pride and enthusiasm. That's me, a positive person who will not let me down because I love this town too much. And like I said, it's an honor to serve. I hope you can consider my, my candidacy and vote for me in September. Again, it's an honor and privilege to be in this town and to serve and volunteer the way I do. I would love to be a town council person. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, one note for the audience. I, I said this in one of the earlier forums. It is, we're using this new technology. It's very interesting, but as these candidates are giving these very uh, eloquent, passionate speeches, they're staring into a tiny little eyeball and, <laughs> and that's their gateway to the audience. So it's a very challenging thing they just did. And uh, so I applaud you all for doing that and, and doing that so well. Uh, uh, thank you all for being with us. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to turn this over uh, to take us out um, to Patricia Sylvester from the League of Women Voters, and uh, she'll she'll take us home. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all for such a thoughtful, thoughtful participation. So thanks to you, Scott, our moderator, and to all the candidates in this forum and the other preceding candidates, and from the League, Joanne and Linda and Susan and Naomi for your help. And thanks to Barrington Library for allowing us to use this space. These forms are available for viewing from Wednesday, August 17th, until primary day, September 13th. You go to the league website, www.lwbri.org, and that will give you links to YouTube and to Facebook. You can watch this program. Um, please note, this is on a little bit of a side topic. The last day to apply to vote by mail in the primary and submit your applications is Tuesday, August 23rd. The mail ballot application can be downloaded from the state website or obtained at your local board of canvassers. And please also vote starting Wednesday, <laughs> August 24th. You can vote in person at town hall for obviously on primary day, September 13th, you can vote at your polling place. So thank you all for a very good evening and good night. Thank you. <laughs>